Welcome back to Developed, everybody. Tonight, we got a full panel talking about our recipe, banana bread French toast. But before we get into talking about that, we're going to talk about some other shit. What you got going on, Volkart? Uh, let's see. I've been uh, mixing up a few recipes this week. I'm going to be one of the uh, so-called judges on uh, Mixing Vixens this Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I believe it is. And so I've been mixing up some of those recipes. Um one from uh, Jen Jarvis, one from Rian, one from uh, the E-Juice Fairy. And I'm still waiting for a flavor uh, for Emily's recipe. So uh, I'm going to be mixing up that as soon as I get it. But I've been doing that. Um, getting ready for uh, Noted on Monday, too. They're going to be talking about pistachios. They're going to have me on there. So looking forward to that, I think. Talking about what? Pistachios. I didn't, I didn't know they were doing that. I think what I heard. Exactly a, is I think I heard a pistachio in there. Pistachio. Is that, is that, I didn't know they were doing pistachio. P- what is that? P- yeah, what's a pistachio? Pistachio. It, it, I don't know what the hell. It is pistachio. <laughs> pistachio. Then this guy comes in to try to make it clear. Pistachio. <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys, wait, listen. That's what we need. Pistachio. Pistachio. Uh, pistachio. Pistachio. <laughs> Yeah, we need a is, between the two of you guys are trying to just describe how to wait, say. Yeah, that should be the only way one. it works. It's Folkart says something and Nachev tries to correct him, and then Folkart, that's gonna be. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. That's uh, one for the ratings. Yeah. Jeez. yeah. Where does pistachios come from anyway? What well, is... I could listen to that all day. <laughs> Believe a tree? No, I mean like the the. <laughs> oh, Argentina. Wow. No, no, Italy, Italy. I think it is in Italian world. Yeah. I think. Is it? L- let me see. I, many, I wouldn't take that to the bank. How many pistachios do you have? I think I have about Rick. 10 pistachios. Rick. 10 pistachios? I was wondering that because I was talking to them about that when I was doing uh, Noted. Um, I only have two, I think. TFA pistachio and uh, Wonder Flavors pistachio. <laughs> Well, how many pistachios do you have? I, I, that, I, I, there's I, a lot more. Yeah, I, I think I have about eight or ten of them. Uh, there was two that I was wanting to get that I couldn't find. One was uh, F.E. Pistachio, and the other one was uh, 101 Pistachio. They had the uh, pistachio ice cream, but mm. not just the, the nut. Hey, does it's everyone not- around you call it a pistachio? Is it, or is that just are you just are you weird around with your talk around your own people or is, is everyone talk like that? This is who I am. All right? I can't <laughs> change it. Uh, it's a pistachio, and that's just the way it is. Uh, I guess I. Talk but I'm saying like, like are the people next door to you going, damn that that folk art don't know how to pronounce shit. Are they saying that or are they pronouncing it the same way? And you're just stuck in your own little like slice of heaven over there. Uh, in I'm, North stuck, Carolina. I'm stuck in my own little slice of hell. Yes. Pistachios run deep through folk arts heritage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all right, yeah, they're pistachio. Folk, yeah. folk is just reinventing the English language of like one word at a time. <laughs> all right, Pippa says one that it is, uh, originates from Central Central Asia or the Middle East. Pistachios. Okay. Huh. huh. Oh, that makes sense. Um, I just tried. Uh, is it kheer? Is that how you say it? K H E E R. Um, which is like a rice pudding, but they use like. Nuts in it like that, yeah. Huh. Mm-hmm. Never heard of it. That's your a, mother's above my eyes. Is it are good? those caterpillars above your eyes, Graham? That's what Sin wants to know. That's what I said. That's her, that's her mother above my eyes. Oh, shit. Hey, Pippa says that I'm pro- I'm pronouncing that uh, that word absolutely perfect, so y'all guys just shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, you're doing it better, better than we are. <laughs> We're using way too many, too less value vowels. Wow, sorry, <laughs> and I forgot how to talk for a minute too. <laughs> I think I um, saw on Reddit. Max, hi. When Dave was Dave had like his uh, AMA thing, and uh, he said pistachio and pistachio and lime work really well together. So I would try to find a recipe that has that. Hmm. Dave has one, doesn't he? 
Does he? I think so, yeah. He's I think he has a pistachio and lime recipe, I think. Hmm. Hmm. I wouldn't have thought to do that. I mean, they're both green. I was looking, I looked up like some spring recipes, and that's actually a pretty popular idea, like a key lime pie kind of, but with pistachio. Mm -hmm. Now I want some pistachio. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to find a use for my pistachio cream lately. We made yes. a pistachio blondie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was pretty good. Yeah, with, with probably my favorite uh, pistachio to use, and that's uh, TPA. I don't know if there is a better pistachio. Well, we'll, well, it depends we'll on if you way. want authenticity or if you want an almond flavor. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, TFA pistachio is just an almond flavor. That's what they use for, like, pistachio pudding. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And uh, um, and Jerry's Cherry Garcia. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Back on topic, though. Yeah. How's, how's it going, Nacho? Hey. <laughs> uh, <laughs> other than talking about pistachios, uh, I've been mixing... Some, what are we mixing? I've been mixing a orange pie. It's not easy to do an orange pie. The problem is the orange, basically. Hmm. Yeah, but uh, that might be a big problem. On it. I, I, well, because you have a lot of oranges, but you need something cooked. So I'm going with orange citrus and orange cream. Hmm. But I'm still playing with it. Other than that, I, not much. Four inches. I, I have a new scale that is good because the other one broke. So I have a new one. Yeah. And that's it. Not you keep much. yours plugged in or you use the batteries? Well, this one, I have a cable for it. Oh, now you didn't have one before? No, I was using batteries. Yeah, I really. It seems more accurate for some reason when you use it plugged in. I don't know why, well, or if that's true. With the old one, what happened was that when I was using batteries, the the scale was going up all the time. I don't know why. With right. the battery, it started going up. So I had to use the cable, and now I have a new scale. Hmm, what nice. about you, Graham? Have you been mixing? Graham? Nothing at all. Okay, okay good time. Yeah, yeah. Alfred. <laughs> it's going well. Said, I'm still focusing on the pistachio thing. I'm trying to look it up and see because I don't know. I don't know if I trust Pippa or um, or Barry. They both are full of shit, I think. But I'm looking it up. But yeah, other than that, no, everything's good. Well, Alfred has just created a new recipe for everybody. You want to talk about that there, buddy? Sure, I'll talk about it Um, so you can make fun of me some more for doing a doing a, an obscure flavor. I made uh, Rain is the name of the recipe, and it tries to capture not really the flavor of Rain because that would just be water, but like the, the, the essence of Rain, like that profile of like standing outside in the rain during the spring. And uh, I really like it. And someone on Facebook that really hates uh, hibiscus and um, honeysuckle tried it out, and they said that they were really digging it. So I feel accomplished. So it's like a screenshot for smell yeah it's i like <laughs> see here we go all right <laughs> well, you didn't have this part planned out like you had the first part planned because you, you thought about it right you thought we were going to ask you about rain so you had a little a little, little speech planned yeah you're not this part though anything graham don't don't even <laughs> worry me? about it um but <laughs> i know you did because you just said the same thing to us that you did to them so i know your little i know your moves sorry right. ready well, for yeah, it yeah it's the same idea it's not a different yeah. idea now no, I like it. I actually do like it. I tried it already. Did you really? You did. Yeah, it's good. No, I didn't. Um, I did. But the, so the premise was that like I, I used four percent hibiscus, which seems like it's going to be a very floral vape, and then uh, threw honeysuckle on top of that even. And so the, the the real like the process that I went through to sort of obscure those and make it so uh, you can honestly barely tell that there's a floral in there. It really just captures that sort of very very wet sort of green sort of kind of soft floral and then like i use the bilberry ripe to sort of tint it blue but you don't get a full blueberry jam flavor at all it's like barely noticeable hmm. well i i love this kind of concept when it comes to recipes because to me this this is a recipe that is like uh it gives you some type of nostalgia uh and memories especially smell memories 
are really powerful. And if you can create an experience or a feeling with the recipe, I think it's just fucking phenomenal. Thank yeah. you for being the only person to not make fun of me, folks. Hey, right. yeah. I don't think it's a bad idea at all. I, I just want to know how much. Great. I want to know how much flavor art is going to pay for the recipe to make a one shot for it. And what are they going to call it? <laughs> They're probably going to call it rain. <laughs> ming ming. Yeah, <laughs> like, it might be like, rain. Like, no, it's going to be like winter rain or summer rain or something like. That. Um, have a weird, I, in a way, I, I test on whatever I'm using. I don't really worry about running it through the the gamut or whatever. People. Um, so I was testing that on an Entheon for the most part, kind of switching back to my favorite RDA, but now I'm back on the Citadel. So if I make something new, I just test it in here. I don't really worry about it. But on a serious note, like you made cabin and cabin for me really did capture autumn in a bottle. So it makes sense. Like it's springtime. It's fucking raining a lot where I am. So you're trying to make rain. So do you have any other ideas like you're going to do after? Yeah, I'm honestly, lately I've just been digging sort of profiles like that where it's sort of, I don't want to say like where it's just so obscure that it doesn't really matter what you make. But like Folkar was saying, where you sort of capture like a sensory memory or like an experience in a vape. So like I've been, I still have winter open, summer open. And then I was looking at like paintings. I've been really interested in like trying to recreate the 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 feeling you get from looking at a painting, but sort of translate that, translate that into flavors. And then like also just solid colors, I think would be really cool. Like just make something red, just very red, whatever that means to you. That is a cool idea. Yeah. Uh, a few years ago, Wayne Walker uh, put out a challenge for people to try to come up with a recipe that, uh, that, you, blue. that you thought tasted like blue. And that was the, that was the funnest uh, recipe that I ever come up with was trying to figure out what the color blue would taste like. And I had several people that, that vaped it said, yeah, that's blue. And it was, it was just phenomenal to, to go after a, a profile like that and try to recreate yeah. that. And I really liked that you can like sort of challenge yourself in doing it. Like it's so easy to say, I want to capture blue. So I'm just going to use blueberry. Blueberries are blue. Done. But like to really sort of get creative and figure out what other things that maybe aren't even blue can like replicate the idea of looking at blue to you. Mm -hmm. I, I really love ideas like that. And Pippa, I will use Rain Dance if I make a sequel. And Emily, no, it's you'd be surprised. Like it's barely floral at all. You can barely sense just this little note of like flowers. It's crazy. I have a concentrate that always made me think of the color purple. Effie lychee. Drop shit. Um, I don't know why it makes me uh, think of the it's color purple because lychees aren't even purple. But every time I try that flavor, and I love that flavor, everybody, that's the lychee to get. Ugh. But yeah, try it and it tastes like purple. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Purple, huh? So moving on. What about you, Poker? Have you been working on anything? Uh, I'm, I'm tweaking, fine, I'm finalizing a recipe. Uh, hopefully it'll be ready by next week. And it's um, it's going to be Nutty Buddy bars. Oh, yeah, that chocolate peanut butter bar. Yeah. That yeah. recipe looks so good. Spoiler alert, it looks phenomenal. Yeah, I'm, I'm still tweaking it just a little bit because after a while, I, I felt like one of the versions, the peanut butter was kind of fading just a little bit, which is not bad. You still get it, but just not as much. And so I'm tweaking it just a little bit. I, I, I want to make it, I just want to get it right uh, so it'll hold up, you know, through the steep and everything. But it should be out pretty soon. Uh, I got this little booger in the mail. Do y'all know, know what that is? That Eddie on there? Can y'all see it? I have no idea. It almost that. Uh, yeah, it looks like the Berserker because I have a Berserker MTL that's and weird. it has that uh, drip tip. Yep, that's what it is. It's a Berserker. B S K R. I think. Is it that. an MTL still, or is it more like restricted lung? It's a mouth to lung. A single single coil. Um, yeah, it's it's a tiny tiny build deck. I I don't think. Well, I know that I haven't whipped it right because I'm getting dry hits from it. 
but uh, I, I need to figure out exactly how to wick it, you know, to get my cotton right and stuff. But it's it's pretty good for a mouth alone. Mouth alone is not really my thing, but um, yeah, I got it as a gift in the mail, which was really cool. So I'm not promoting it. It's just this was a gift from an individual, not from the company. But yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I like it. Does it still have those like? Oh, go ahead. Do you do anything different when you think a recipe for a mouth to lung? Well, uh, well I'm starting to. I'm starting to. <laughs> uh, because it definitely... So so with what... what I, I don't know that much about mouth to lung. I, I really haven't... That's not kind of my thing. But I've, uh, I've noticed that with a mouth to lung, you really are not picking up all of the complexity of most of the recipes that I do you know you, you you might get two maybe three notes from it and that's about it so yeah you have to really think about that when you're developing a recipe for mouth to lung for sure are you what using I know, um, you your recipes issues in the excuse me go ahead go ahead that you don't have those stages in the in the recipe in the flavor you don't have that separation between the bass and the middle notes and the high notes. It's all like condensed in one note and maybe you pick up something different, but it's very straightforward and very flat. So yeah. You need to be very creative. Yeah, it, exactly, exactly. So my, my idea at first was just, just to basically treat it like a pod system recipe, just try to pump up all the, all the percentages and stuff. That really don't work, I don't think. So you have to you have to change if if you're making a direct lung recipe, but you also want people to use it in a mouth to lung. It kind of has to be a different recipe. Um, you know, it just you, you can't you can't just take that recipe and just double it. It just kind of don't work. Yeah, I've noticed um, in my experience that like some some flavors really don't need adjustment to show up as much. Like uh, obviously, flavor rich cinnamon, perfect example. You never you don't need to like pump that up to still get cinnamon. Um, but I would say like, it works if you like, think about my 007 cola mm -hmm. because it, it's still pretty complex, but the, the final product is more of one flavor. Right. And so it, for making like MTL and pod recipes, I feel like you should lean towards that instead of trying to find that separation. It's more to mix flavors together to create something new out of them. That's one single flat flavor. Yeah. You want something very one note. I, I always use like, I either go the RY4 route. I Basically, the way I look at it is bold. Just use bold flavors, whether they're very bright flavors or they're very dark flavors. So like caramels, like rich, darker flavors or something like uh, pink guava, something like uh, Effie lychee, stuff like that. That's very bright, very just in your face and everything. Those work really well. But if you're trying to get like little touches of like nuance or like, you know, pistachio or something like that, it ain't all going to come through. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And, and you realize that because if you try something that is very old, for example, I, I, I have been vaping for I don't know, four or five years now. And I remember mother's milk or the five pounds liquids. And you try it now with totally a very different uh, equipment. It is not the same flavor, and maybe the, the company is doing the same, but since you change that much, what are you using? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I, what I usually do. I don't know. Like, strawberry and cream is probably going to come up. Is it always going to be great? Probably not. But it's probably going to always come out better. Like, we're spoiled that we use, like, flavor RDAs, like the Hadley or the Citadel or the Entheon or um, anything that has a small chamber when you have to do when you're doing stuff like that it's still a small chamber but the airflow is so different that you really need it to be like in your face so i i definitely have had an issue with that too it's different than creating something for a pod or something with little airflow or on the other end of the spectrum with high airflow like a recoil or a goon or something like that yeah. it's all a balancing act yeah yeah for sure and another issue you run into with doing sort of mtl or, or pod recipes is that they're so vastly different just going from one device or one tank to another where like if you're using like an rda it's always basically the same wattage same resistance same overall experience 
but the difference between like a berserker mtl tank and a uh, infinix pod is like crazy it's night and day yeah so what kind of build can you put in there because it's like a smaller deck yeah uh, um yeah I, I just put uh round wire i think it's um uh, five wraps uh 2.5 millimeter hmm. yeah yeah I, I can imagine that like doesn't really help with the flavor in there but that's that's really kind of what this device is made for that's that's the kind of build that's that's it's made yeah. for so um uh, that's that's kind of what that's that's what i went with i normally use uh aiden clapton's in most of my stuff hmm. but uh yeah with, with this one I, I just use round wire i think it was 24 gauge canthal yeah that's how it was for i have the the rda version of that the berserker whatever the, the version was at that time i know there's a lot of them mm-hmm. and uh it's designed for like a thinner round wires basically all you're gonna get to work in there yeah yeah i have that one too um it reminds me like both the deck on the berserker rda and the silver play rta it's kind of the same but the rta on that um uh silver play it doesn't have like the walls to like trap the wire on the side and it always would spit it out and i hated that shit yeah i I warned you before you got it man like i love the experience that you get out of it but it is the worst building experience you will ever have all they needed to put is a wall on there though Mm, maybe not the worst you ever had the mirror no Mm -mm. the old school mirror they used to you could put coils on both sides of it oh Mm. I've looked in a mirror uh-huh. though. Look that up one day. Hmm. Because like the the issue with the silver play is not only does it not have walls to trap your leads or whatever when you're trying to put your coil in, but it's like ten parts that you have to put together just to start. But that was so easy to wick. If they could do that, like if they could get that experience with how well it wicks, I'm fine only having a two mil ju- juice capacity. I think I'm weird where a lot of people want a lot more, but Two mil is fine for me. I'm used to dripping. If I just fill up a tank and I get like, you know, an hour or two out of it without having a drip, I'm fine. But I just yeah, I prefer hate... that. Yeah, right. Like I don't care. And if yeah. I look for the two mil ones, yeah, I, I think they look cleaner. They're a lot easier to like kind of maintain. And plus, how much juice can you put through there before you have to re wick? Yeah. Or anything like that anyway i don't care well, it's, it's bouncing all around the way that we do you know what i mean with, you can't, can't have these tanks with like eight mil capacity you know right i, I rarely go through a whole tank mm-hmm. so, wait yeah two is perfect for me like the gear the gear is perfect hippa says vape train has a lychee vape train does yeah i didn't even know that i want to try that don't you have all of them at this point what lychees no. No, I have uh, Jungle Flavors, Flavor Express, Cap, Sweet Elite. I have a few, but uh, no, I, I didn't even know Babe Train had a Lychee. You, like you, you like a bunch of shit, dude. You should you click on their website. Mm-hmm. What are you going to say, Max? You have Jungle Flavors, and you think that that one's more authentic, but you didn't like it better, right? Yeah, I, I like them both, but Jungle Flavors captures that sort of slightly floral, very clean lychee experience that you get from the actual fruit where fe is sort of like a funkier artificial flavoring version that i just enjoy more overall it's like really syrupy do you think it makes you think of the color purple yeah i see yeah i see what you mean when you say purple it has yeah that sort of it's syrupy it's very like it's like funky but kind of floral kind of yeah it's kind of purple it's like the medium of all of them like it's to me, it's not too floral. It's not too funky, but I right, love yeah, pink lava, yeah. so I put I love to put them together. But <clears throat> yeah, did uh, did somebody mention something about a website? A website? Yeah. Can we talk about that for a second? Yeah, I, I'll, I'll, talk I'll just talk about it for a second. Uh, we're in the process of uh, creating a developed website where we're going to have everything that we do on there. So everybody look out for that. It, it may take a while uh, for us to get it all set up, but it'll be like a one one place so you don't have to go to Facebook, you don't have to go to YouTube. You just go to the website and everything will be on there and more, hopefully, uh, mm-hmm. by the time we're, we're done with it. 
and it's uh, developdiy.com. It's not up yet, but it will be up soon. Yeah. Well, the reason why we also talked about doing it is because YouTube is really not liking all that link business in the description. So we can just put our links and everything. You'll have to go there. It just kind of saves us from, from the YouTube overlords trying to strike down their mighty hammer. <laughs> yeah. No, and, and also you can have everything together. You can have the recipe we did and our notes about that. You you can have the video. You can have a flavor reviews linked to that recipe we did. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I know you you do a lot of uh, flavor reviews on your Instagram, right? Not sure if it'd be awesome to like integrate that in there just so everyone can find basically all of the information we have to offer in one place. Yeah, we, we, we have been talking about it. And since I try to do one flavor review every week, in Spanish, sorry guys, but <laughs> I was thinking that since we make our recipe, for example, now banana nut bread, well, let's try to do, I don't know, banana custard from Babe Train, so you can have everything together in one week, all the information. Yeah, 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 I think it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, and, yeah uh, I'm, I'm excited for it. That's all I was gonna say. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm just, I'm all for having something straightforward and like uh, easy to use and intuitive where you don't have to really think about it. You just go there and you know all of our stuff is waiting. Yeah. And everybody loves stuff, I'm telling you. We right. plan on adding a lot more too, but we're keeping it kind of basic because it's going to be new and it's new to us too. So, yeah. But there's going to be a lot of stuff on there eventually. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. All right. So you ready to start going over the recipe? Yeah, let's jump into that bowl. Oh, man. I am so excited about this recipe. I hope that that people, some people in the chat ha has mixed this up. I know it, two days doesn't give a, a whole lot of time for people to get flavors and mix it up, but this is a, spoiler alert, a phenomenal recipe. Yeah, and uh, I feel like we have to start with Max because it's really his inspiration and idea that we had to go off of. So when I used to work at this restaurant, um, we, would do, we would do brunch like a lot of restaurants do. We had a Sunday morning brunch, and instead of like how you get bread and I don't, you know other pastries with your meal or whatever, we would do like baskets of pastries. So what we would do is we would um, – we'd have all sorts of stuff, but – we made a uh, banana bread and we would just give you like a little slice of it and everything. But when we had so much like kicking around when it was kind of slow, we would just like make like a meal for everybody out of either the leftovers or whatever was going on. So we take a slice of it and we would put it in the French toast batter because it was right there and just could it, put it on the flat top and then cooked it up for everybody, throw whatever you want on top. And I always wanted to recreate it because it was so good. So that's where I came up with the idea. Oh. And so when you vape this, does it like bring back some of those memories that you had? Or? Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's, um, it's pretty much as close as I think you can get to it in a vape form. And it hits all the notes. It's, it's, it's bready. It's definitely French toast. It's nice and dense and everything I wanted. That sounds like the most like fancy ass restaurant I've ever heard of where you go to a, a brunch and they just give you a basket of several pastries. I loved working there. The guy who I've worked with that guy for, I think four or five years now. And he was the pastry chef everywhere and he's very good especially in this area and it was a kind of a fancy place but at the same time it was a really chef driven menu so we were able to do whatever we wanted so if we wanted to make a banana bread french toast we could totally do it it would be a special everybody on the line would come up with their own special and he knocked it out of the park every time every dessert he ever made was incredible but yeah it was a fancy fucking place <laughs> that makes me uh, now I want to like explore that and find out what else he made because the idea of just taking like banana bread and making it into a delicious buttery french toast is just genius it's, 
It's slutty as fuck. <laughs> it really was. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this recipe up so everybody can uh, can take a look at it. Um, and for the people listening on the pod chat, you want me just to tell everybody what's in it? I guess that's a yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes. I thought you were gonna do it anyway. Okay. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's alright. It's alright. Okay, so we used uh, 1% vape train banana custard, 5% TPA banana nut bread, 0.75% cap cinnamon sugar, 0.5% FA maple syrup, 075 101 powdered sugar, 2% vape train pudding base, and 1.5% cap vanilla custard. And it is awesome. Yeah, it's and th- this is this is the result of a very interesting development. I don't know if it, when you watch the episode, you see that, but we went through a lot of flavors. Yeah, it was crazy. I had to even like cut some out when I was editing because we went through basically every flavor we have that even relates to banana bread, French toast. But the only one that I, I, you can see it in the recipe because the fla- I, I tried afterwards this recipe without the banana caster, with another ma- maple, with a, a lot of different things. I, I'm sure this is the best we can we can have done after all we tried, and it's awesome. And let me tell you something: pudding base. I think it was Graham' idea. It's excellent here. Yeah, it's it's the flavor for for this recipe. Yeah, there are, there are two flavors for me that really just make this thing so incredible. Um, but. I feel like we could run through all of them real quick. So it started with the the obvious choice, which was TPA banana bread, which um, I'm not sure if you're aware, but Volkar and I had never even tried that until Max got onto us. Yeah, I almost literally quit the show. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. First episode. Yeah, you did, didn't you? Coming in fucking hot. (laughs) And it it really gets you started if you want to do anything with, like, banana nut bread because it has – that sort of it's not really bready and it's not really a finished product per se but for the fact that you could like 10 percent that and you get banana nut bread in a vape is just amazing there's nothing weird about it at all yeah and you can crank it too like that what i get from it is like you walk in and somebody's making banana bread like you don't you just get the full aroma of all of that the only thing that i think like you get the a nice like it's not a candied banana, and you do get like a little bit of a nuttiness, but you don't really get the bread, which was the only thing that was really missing to complete a banana bread. Right, and then to make a French toast, I know we started with the the FA custard premium and tried that out, but we we ended up switching to cap vanilla custard surprisingly because Max wanted to. So what <laughs> what really made you want to switch over? Uh, because like there's certain things that from Capella, like a lot of people say like they're kind of greasy or like buttery or oily. I think like they're really fatty in a way, which I guess is kind of the same thing, but I don't get like an oiliness. Like, I don't know. I just don't like that word for it, but I do get like a certain fattiness from it that I really wanted to come through and also kind of moisten it up a little bit. But, you know, the other custards weren't really doing it. And I know that that note would stick out more than the custard. So it seemed like a really good place in this recipe. Yeah. And I know Folk Art was talking about it while we were working on it, that whenever he's doing something along these lines, he loves to throw the cap vanilla custard in there. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime that I'm uh, working on some type of a bakery that has like um, a soft, uh, moist cakey like aspect to it or maybe even a gooey kind of uh, aspect to it i like to add just a little bit of uh, cap vanilla custard because it changes it changes the uh the bakery uh the dry you know kind of cakey bakery into just a soft moist uh spongy not spongy just a, a soft moist Say moist one more time Say moist one more time <laughs> moist Moist. I don't know. <laughs> God damn it. Can you say, can you say pistachio now? Pistachio. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, it just, it adds, it adds that, um, 
the the chew, right? The chew. I, I to remember. The, you, yeah. I remember you imitated it. Yeah, the, 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 the chewy and the the um, the gooiness, I guess. You know, like if you're doing a a, a blondie, you know, you, you want that cakey, but you want it to be kind of gooey, almost like a uh, a mix between a fudge and a cake. And so that's that's what that vanilla custard does to um, bakeries and cakes and stuff like that. I rarely use vanilla custard just for custard, uh, cap vanilla custard just for custards. I use it in a lot of bakeries. It works very well. Yeah, shout out to Emily because we actually use that trick with the um, pistachio blondie that we made with her. Exactly. Pistachio blondie. Sorry, I think I said it wrong. Um. Yeah, it did the same thing. It kind of undercooked it, which was what we wanted. We wanted to like kind of par cook it a little bit. And then, uh, what what gave you the idea to use vape train uh, pudding base, Graham? Just it just seemed like the right. I mean, bread. What were you looking? We were looking for something a little more bready, right? Yeah. At the time. Yeah. To fill in it that. Like, right. Yeah, fill in that dough. We tried yeah. brunch before to do like a toast. But right, it right, didn't right. because the, 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 the cinnamon part was fighting with the cinnamon in the banana nut bread. I think that that was the problem. Yeah, it really wasn't blending at all, right? It was like you have the cinnamon from the banana nut bread and then this other drier cinnamon sort of on top of that. My problem with that, I don't know. Does anybody else in the chat or here, do they get a problem when they try to use that as like, an addition to a recipe that it just muddies the fuck out of everything. Like what's it's, that? That the cinnamon, cinnamon crunch. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because it it just Definitely. it doesn't all it kind of like it's the opposite of what you want. It doesn't. You either have to fucking crank it and get the full thing, or you just kind of get this kind of mushy mess out of it. That's well, what I get. But I do understand, like, uh, Notchev had the idea to throw that in there sort of to back up that banana nut bread uh, cinnamon. And it's because it has this sort of, it's like a toastier cinnamon. And it, it it's basically the AP version of cinnamon, too. It helps sell, like, crunchy, bready, crispy things. So, so ideally, it would have worked well if it didn't do what you're describing, sort of muddying it up and sitting on top as a separate cinnamon. Yeah, I don't know what it is because I, I really – I wanted it to work too because it really would have – you know, it would have added that cinnamon that we wanted and it would have added that like bake layer, but it just didn't all come through. It just kind of seemed to mess up the whole bread layer. Disappointing. Yeah, I, I was getting a, a very scratchy kind of feel from the first version that we used it in, um, and it was very dry to me. Uh, I'm I'm – you know, I, I was hoping that it would work too, but honestly, I haven't had much luck with it uh, in the things that I've used it in. So I just get that dryness from it, and you know, like you say, the the muddiness. It kind of it's kind of muddy. So mm -hmm. no, I haven't really had much luck with it. Right. Did, did then, you notice any change after one week? Because for me, this is only going to get better week after week yeah i agree too i i think that it came together a lot more and it, also a lot more of the richness came out too yeah especially with the, the, the specifically the, the custard the banana nut bread and the the pudding base those three things really start to like fuse into this one finished doughy profile in the recipe like where at first you get more of like there's pudding base here and banana nut bread. It's like you get the, the doughy bready part separate kind of from that banana nut bread profile. And then over time they start to like morph into this single thing. All because that inhale is stale, man. That's what we needed. We didn't get enough of that the bread. Inhale of stale. Yeah. Say hashtag, it again. hashtag inhale of stale. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. We're we're we're, create, we're creating little, little <laughs> secrets and shit. And then I I know Nachup, you were saying that you just loved the the idea of using pudding base. Do you want to like sort of explain what you think works really well here using that? The pudding base. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it complements the banana nut bread because the the bread for me the banana nut bread what is more like the banana you should use 
for something like this is not a very good bread by itself. The pudding base, I think, is it's more like the 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 more the bread the the part inside the bread without the crust and f feel that in the in the banana bread. I, I don't know how to explain it, but it works very well. Yeah, it does work really, and I think like that combination of the vanilla custard, cap vanilla custard, and pudding base there, both like do this a similar effect to get this sort of chewy, moist middle part, like you were describing that the the banana nut bread was lacking, right? Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. And I also tried this recipe. I, I didn't had a. Uh, maple syrup so i use waffle belgian and it's also very good yeah I, I that's one twenty-five, a quarter Liqu percent liquid barn no no tpa oh, okay it's basically just syrup it's very similar um to fa maple just to provide a syrupy yeah. accent yeah um which we we ended up going with the fa maple in the the final version at half a percent i know max was saying you thought that was too much at first, right? Yeah, but it does tone down. So I, I mean, I, I get sick of maple. I don't know how many times I have to fucking say that. Maybe it got cut from the recording, but <laughs> I get, I think that is really strong and aggressive up front. But it does kind of like tone down after a little bit. So and it did, it did a really. Good, I think it settled in pretty nice in the recipe the way it is now. But yeah, I think only half a percent was a good spot for it yeah and i think the uh cap cinnamon sugar and the one-on-one -on -one powdered sugar kind of blends with that maple syrup uh and really makes it more of like a sticky syrup if that makes sense right and how do you think like uh you want to talk about like why we chose to do the cinnamon sugar and how it ended up working a little bit uh what what's what cinnamon note were we using in the first version we, we were just the using cinnamon this, crunch yeah this yeah. cinnamon crunch yeah. Um, I'm not really, I'm not really that familiar with cinnamon sugar. I just got it recently, so I can't really comment on it except just to say that it's a, it's a sweet cinnamon. I mean, it's it's cinnamon with sugar. I mean, it's yeah, pretty right. So straight, it is. straightforward. Yeah, and and like um, we were saying, like we had that that issue with cinnamon crunch sort of sitting on top as a separate cinnamon. I've noticed in any application that I use the cap cinnamon sugar, it will blend where you want it to blend if that makes sense where a lot of other cinnamons even like rich cinnamon for example a lot of the time will want to sit on top as this sort of additional cinnamon note like a drier cinnamon but i noticed that the cinnamon sugar can be even you can make it wet if you want you can make like a milkshake or whatever with with that and it'll blend in to the, the base of it yeah and one other thing I, I can say about the cinnamon sugar is that me as a kind of a non-cinnamon locker, I don't really vape that many cinnamon vapes. And sorry about this, Alfred, <laughs> but I don't particularly like the rich cinnamon. <laughs> but I this forget. okay, but this but this cinnamon I think has just the right amount. If if you're a non I can't talk. If you're a non-cinnamon vapor, uh, you still may like this because it's 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 just it's just enough cinnamon. It's not overpowering. Uh, it really sits well with, with everything that's in the mix. So don't be afraid of it. And then the, the last thing is honestly the thing that I'm most excited to talk about because we added the one-on-one -on -one powdered sugar towards the end, right? And the it did so much in this recipe that it's, it blows my mind. It, like, it, it thickened that – because F.A. Maple is sort of this thin – like Folkart was describing while we were working on it, it's like a very watery maple flavor where it's not really a syrup. And that powdered sugar really thickened that up. It brought out the banana somehow, right? Yeah, it did. Yeah. It did, sure enough. Because we, we tried it, uh, we tried to mix with the banana custard and the banana nut bread because we wasn't getting enough banana without the one-on-one -on -one powdered sugar. Uh, and when we added the powdered sugar, it just like made that banana pop even more. It was really nice. And it, it, it made it seem more authentic to a true French toast. Because every, every French toast I've ever tried, I always put, you know, uh, powdered sugar yeah. on it. Yep, same. Yeah. I've never had French toast without the powdered sugar syrup combo, where it almost, like, 
crystallizes a bit, the powdered sugar sort of in the syrup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Classic. Mm -hmm. It kind of almost gave me like that cinnamon sugar mixed with the powdered sugar thing. Like, you know how people put the cinnamon in with like the powdered sugar? Yeah, yeah. I got that. Mm -hmm. That's what it reminded me of like that kind of topping right on top. Yeah. Didn't have to say it was Did, on Is top. there anything you would change to this recipe? I wouldn't. There's something I wish that we could have made work, which was the Flavora eggnog. I oh. really would have liked that in there, but it didn't work. And that honestly really upsets me. I don't really know why it didn't work because on paper, it shouldn't. It should. It should work. I know, but it, like that spice note really didn't come through enough. And then when it did, it was like, I think I got a lot of scratchiness from that in there too. But it could have been the cinnamon, sh the cinnamon crunch. Did we try it without it? I, that's just what I was going to ask. I don't think we did. I don't think we just tried the eggnog. Um, I think we, we decided that that eggnog was making it seem a little bit muddy. We... I didn't actually taste any eggnog in it at all. Me neither. I, I, did, I, I did get that kind of uh, scratchiness, whether it's from the cinnamon crunch or whether it's from the eggnog, uh, like a, a nutmeg kind of a scratchiness. And I know you, you were saying that you tried using the eggnog in like EM applications, right? And it still yes. doesn't work? Yeah, it just, I don't know. It just doesn't, it doesn't seem to blend well with other flavors. Um... I, I did try it with a coffee recipe, and it seemed to work okay with that. Um, but with bakeries, I don't know. It just it just seems to get either lost or funky. I don't know. I bet that would be really good with a coffee. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, but what coffee? Uh, crispy, well, crispy coffee. Wonder flavors. Wait, that's a real thing? Yeah. Yeah. Crispy coffee. What is crispy coffee? Crispy coffee. They have a bunch of coffees. Mm -hmm. Right. I know about like Brazilian and their smooth cappuccino cream and all of those. I've never heard of crispy coffee. Uh, Wonder Flavors crispy coffee. I think that's yeah, what it's a candy bar in Canada. It has like a bakery note. It's similar to Brazilian, but more baker. Yeah. At least that's, I... at least that's what I used in, in my recipe. And it works though. It's like a good coffee. I locked it. I locked it. Now Dave uh, tried it out, and he he locked it. Uh, but then he said that uh, he got a note of if you were going down the road, and you got three miles um, uh, past a dead skunk in the road, then that's kind of what the note he was picking up. <laughs> so I don't know whether he locked it or not, but that's how he described it. <laughs> hmm. Um, I will never get tired of those descriptions. <laughs> I know, I know. But he, he did like it. He, he said he, he liked it, but, I, you know, if you're tasting skunk in it, I don't see how you could. But he said it was like a skunk that was killed like three miles away, so not too oh. skunky. Hmm. And then we can't forget about the banana custard, right? we got to go over that. Um, we were looking at the banana puree. At least I know Max had that idea to throw the Wonder Flavors banana puree. But um, I think the banana custard was more of like a, a fleshier, sort of subtle banana, right? It's more like authentic to if you were to add bananas to something. Yeah. What was that? Someone losing their mind. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the, the banana custard, I thought, was a pretty good choice because um, – uh, why is it? Well, I mean, you, you – Anytime you can add just a little bit more custard to get to give give that bread uh, a little softness and a little moistness to it, um, I think is good. Plus, we we weren't getting enough banana from the banana nut bread, so with that flavor, you you can, you kind of kill two birds with one stone. Right. Yeah. It it really supports that uh, that chewiness that you uh, wanted from the 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 final product, and then that the banana in there, like I said, it's such a authentic like banana mush flavor mm -hmm. where like banana puree would be more syrupy and kind of uh stand on top right but the, the banana custard will like blend more yeah is is the is the banana puree kind of kind of watery i mean is it like a wet uh flavor? yeah this, this one the, the the custard is more it's bright but it's not candy 
more yeah. like a ripe banana. Right, that, and that's how I like to look at like all banana flavors. Right, is how how runty are they? How candy like or how authentic and like I, 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 nutty? Like it's hard to describe that that idea, but it's the opposite of candy banana. Yeah, it's the banana that's in the avocado. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The avocado probably could have worked in here too. Uh, Pippa has a uh, comment that she said, "I can't believe you guys overlooked Mullenberry soft banana." I actually have that one, um, and it's it's a it's still a bit more artificial. It's more candy like than I would say vape trained banana custard. Yeah, another thing though is not a lot of people have Mullenberry stuff, and we can't like uh, recipes going forward. We kind of try to think about that we try to keep that in mind especially having like someone like Nashef here where he he really like kind of reminds us that not a lot of people can get these flavors so we want people to be able to mix them up and we're not going to try to make you go out and get one flavor just for one recipe we want to show you how to work what you probably already have mm -hmm. and i i could totally see what you're coming from like i'm sure it would work in here but that's probably why we overlook and, uh, certain flavors. I, I don't know if you know this, but the problem with the ban banana flavor is when you try to make a banana flavor, the, the concentrate, you have to go from a candy banana. For example, w when you when companies try to make a, a strawberry, you need like five components to make a strawberry. The, there is no strawberry component, but there is a banana component. I, I don't don't remember the name, but it's a candy banana. So they go from the candy banana and then they have to try to, to blend it into something different. That's mm -hmm. why most of the bananas we have are more candy than dry banana. Yeah. I fucking love how you say banana. Banana. You said it so many times banana. and I was just like, how the fuck did you do that? Like, banana. Guana. What, what is the other one? Guanabana. 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 No, no, it's banana. banana. A pistachio banana. <laughs> we have to make a pistachio banana guanabana. That would... Pro oh, <laughs> damn. Just don't make me say it. <laughs> Th that's the whole reason why we're going to do it. <laughs> that's going to be incredible. Are you kidding me? Why pass up that opportunity? Uh, and we need a snapshot of that sound. All right. Um, so I was just looking it up. I was talking to Luke Loop. I know he's been working on a, a banana ice cream for a while now. And uh, it's isoamyl acetate is the thing that Notchef was thinking of that is in candy banana. It's the runt thing. And yeah. Mullenberry soft banana has quite a substantial amount of that. And that's why we chose the, the vape train banana custard over it is because if you, if you do too much of the isoamyl acetate in any flavor, flavor of banana has it, lots of them, banana puree, wonder flavors, um, it turns into this very syrupy, candy-like banana that you don't want from a realistic French toast application. So there must not be a lot of that in the banana nut bread, right? Because no, that's no. like real. There's not a lot of that in the, the Vape Train avocado cream, the Vape Train banana custard, banana nut bread from TPA. They have like not even recognizable amounts of it. Fucking college boy always bringing math and science into shit. I love Alfred's mind. Yeah. I you beautiful it. computer, you. <laughs> okay, so what are we working on next, guys? Do we have an idea? <sighs> Man, we I are... think we're gonna have uh, <laughs> one of, personally one of my favorite guests come and help us out if if everything goes to plan, right? Um, so probably gonna lean into the bakeries again, just for preference' sake. Probably, yeah. probably. Fuck it. Who we got? And I still, I I really want to tackle sort of a a painting or an obscure profile. I've just been digging that idea so much. Fucking easy, easy does it there, Picasso. <laughs> we're not all going to be fucking coloring, you know, we're not going to capture vaping and sound and shit. Hey, we could. Never know. I don't know. I'm not on that level. <laughs> yeah. What other shit do you have planned? You talk about winter. I'm not sure how you tackle summer. Just summer? Just hot sweat. 
maybe some uh, some of the the butthole melon. Like anything with WS23. Wonder Flavors Passion Fruit. Passion yeah. Fruit. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. But that sweet sweat. That's not a bad thing, though. Sometimes you need that. Well, yeah. Yeah. You need, that, you need that certain pungency going on. Mm-hmm. I don't know. When I think of summer, I just think of like fruity, cold shit. WS23 and fruits. Right, but that's what you want during the summer. That's not capturing the idea of summer. Didn't somebody you know I mean? make a summertime? Or didn't somebody yeah. do that? Was it Chiba? Yeah, yeah. There, there is a summertime recipe. Let me, yeah, let me find that. it. All right, Sin, Sin is uh, requesting that we do more fruits. More bakery side fruits. Okay. Yeah, we um, should do more fruits. I don't think we have many. Well, uh, we- as far as your question, uh, Pippa, how do I know that it has that certain amount or whatever is because you you can identify through association things that are chemicals that are used in flavors for example um smelling a lot of things that have butanoic acid now i can identify it in most things like uh forest fruit for example when we were working on the the captain crunch berries is uh i chose that because the actual captain crunch berries use a substantial amount of butanoic acid it's the same thing in uh tutti fruity or uh, juicy fruit max likes to say um and you just learn over time through association of those flavors what that smell is. Um, and, and also like TPA's butter combo of the uh, the acetoin and uh, what's the other one? Acetopropanol. Acetopropanol. After smelling that in so many applications, I can identify it pretty easily in like um, their butter, their, their vanilla custard, uh, FA premium custard has it just substantially less. Um, the same but, with all the flavors with the coconut bay, with that coconut note, that gamma octaton. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Same same concept. Yeah. What do you think that that uh, greasy thing is in Capella? Do you think it's like a different like? I mean, it can't be a different like. It's probably a different com- combination, right? It could yeah, be some gamma shit. That gamma butanol metropolis thing no it's not game of octalone that they use for the the greasy vanilla as emily likes to call it in cap i'm not really sure what that compound is but it's probably something that reads as sort of fatty um oily buttery something like that what's the gamma metropolosis thing that's the coconut right yeah it's the it's the the oily part of coconut but it's different from the funnel cake oily if that makes sense if you don't know what it is, you just say it's cyclotina maltol. That's right. it. Uh, yeah. Just if you don't know what it is. Yeah, cyclotina it makes it sound smarter, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's how you do it. Flavor was salty butter balls equals summer. Ball. Why does it smell like balls? Ball sweat. Salty butter balls. Wonder flavors, passion fruit for the armpit. You got to get something with that butthole note in there. There you go. Uh, You're off and running. Mm, mm. Why you guys? Why do you want the butthole note? <laughs> Sweaty, sweaty butthole, man. I, I would personally omit the butthole, but that, that's just me. I wouldn't. All I right, but you, but you do want the armpit and the balls. All right. That's fine. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. All right, I got you. What about feet? Wasn't there a feet one too, or is that passion for it? Like TPA. Uh... No, I think you're right. There's something that reads as, as footy. I don't know what it is, though. It's not I can't... sweet cream, right? It's, uh, DX sweet cream, TPA. Oh, that one's foot? There you go. Do them all at 8%, and you know, it'll probably be amazing, right? Mm. Actually, Man, it's like, I, actually, it's more like uh, baby vomit, I think. Baby vomit. Glenn Donaldson says that taint a good flavor. <laughs> I love that. I love a good pun. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, are we, are we out of here? I think we're going to get out of here. We're about to record the next episode. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. And we will see you again next week with whatever we have prepared. Yeah. Banana pistachio. <laughs> what a banana. Yeah, you got to do all three. <laughs> Peace, guys. <laughs>